went to the Steel City and found a 71 to 64 victory against the Pitt Panthers. Teams matching up for the fourth consecutive season in the non-conference. Last year was an overtime thriller, which the Tigers came out on top in the roundhouse. Here's Kenny Poto inside. And rebound to Mizzou's Noah Carter. Carter, Missouri, six and two. Losses at home to Memphis and Jackson State. And the starting five on the floor for the Tigers for a team that's averaging 75 points a game. Scoring is down from where they were last year. NCAA tournament season that saw them finish in the top five in the country in scoring. Here's Tamar Bates, lefty to the baseline. And a rebound to the Shockers. As you watch Missouri on the defensive end, expect a lot of switching and pressure on the perimeter. Wichita State must be able to get their head down and get to the basket despite it. Kenny Poto gives him 14 points a game. That ball's knocked away in Missouri with the turnover to the hands of Aiden Shaw. There you have it, that switch where they can guard multiple spots, one through five, can the Tigers create discomfort for the opponent. Well, Carter is versatile, tries to get inside. The paint and has it rejected by Quincy Ballard, 6'11 senior, out of Syracuse, and another Wichita State turnover. East penetrates and kicks. And already Paul Mills with his hands on hips a moment ago, not happy with the a couple of turnovers early, and then an offensive rebound. Here's Nick Honor. And the veteran rips the net for his first bucket. No hesitation for Honor, nor should there be. This is one of the best three-point shooters in the country. Shockers averaging nearly 11 turnovers a game, but a season low six in the Richmond game midweek at home. Already two in the first two minutes today. Contested three from the wing was halfway down, but into the hands of Rodgers. And the second time he can't get it to go either, and a foul inside of Missouri's eight Shaw. Paul Mills in his first season as a head coach at Wichita State, six seasons at Oral Roberts, 30 wins in an NCAA tournament. And a trip to the Sweet 16 and 21, longtime Baylor assistant for 14 years. You see the second chance opportunity. That's one of the things Coach Mills told us in shoot around was he felt like they might have an opportunity, but now that's three of those live ball turnovers we talked about they must avoid in the open. They get a hold on Carter's way in, and it's on Xavier Bell. Dennis Gates took Missouri into the second round of the NCAA tournament last year, 31 and 12, for longtime assistant to Leonard Hamilton of Florida State. And then three successful seasons at Cleveland State, where he was two time Horizon League Coach of the Year. And I love the aggressiveness Coach Gates' teams play with. That's how they were able to be a surprise team last year in the SEC. You're seeing it on display right now. They are always the aggressor. No Carter at the free throw line. That wasn't the case in the pit game. Panthers outshot him at the free throw line, and Gates afterwards saying, We've got to do a better job getting there. Missouri minus three in free throws made per game compared to the opponent. Here's Noah Carter. The Buke Iowa native knocks them both down. He had 20 and eight in this matchup last year in Wichita. Xavier Bell is a Wichita native, started his college career at Drexel. Now back home and part of a two headed backcourt. With Colby Rogers and another Wichita State turnover. Dane, this is a point of emphasis for the Shockers so much, though, that Paul Mills has his players get up and explain every turnover they make the day after. Yeah, that's something he's been able to do throughout his career is make the team be accountable. Stand up in front of your team, explain why you had the turnover. And a lot of times it's due to toughness, passing, or ball handling. That one certainly about the passing and ball handling. Three minutes into this one, Missouri pitching a shutout. East was doubled for a moment. Honor gets it back from Shaw. And he floats it in. Nick Honor, Clemson transfer, who started his career at Fordham. And I love that play. We saw it early in shoot around, didn't we, Tom? It, when they skip the ball, when Missouri does across the way, usually teams will do a dribble handoff. Rarely do they do a dribble handoff uphill, but that's exactly what's going to happen on this one. 
as they switch it there, look, Shaw's going to come uphill for that dribble handoff. He's got a guy coming around if he doesn't have his floater. You see 35 and White Carter. If Honor doesn't have the floater, he can reverse pivot back to the shooter. Off the rim, and now Carter with the rebound. Push ahead. Tamar Bates coming off a 12-point performance. Carter. Off the side of the rim. This is a veteran Missouri team, according to Ken Palm, 10th in the country in experience. And Carter got his hands on that one. Like many teams these days, most of Missouri's experience started elsewhere. That includes four out of the five guys on the floor right now. Six graduates on this team. And Whew. Gives you 11 up a classman. The popcorn guy was open. Goodness gracious. Turnover number five. And they've got just about twice as many turnovers as they do field goals. And a much needed timeout by Coach Mills before the first media timeout. And Paul Mills is not going to wait. They are 0 for 3 with six turnovers to start this game on offense. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Later today at halftime, Missouri will be honoring Norm Stewart for his fight against cancer. Sit down with one of his former star players, Derek Chivas, after the next media timeout. Six turnovers for Wichita State, and they are 0 for 3 from the floor. What a start for this Missouri team. Here's East. Honor finds Aiden Shaw. Back out to Noah Carter. And he drills the three. It's a 10 0 start for Mizzou. And that shows you the versatility. Carter can shoot that as the big man trying to play on. Poto is taking a step back, afraid of a small forward beating him off the bounce. How do you characterize Wichita State's turnovers here early? Well, they've got to give themselves a chance. Missouri switches, so Wichita State wants to find the switch to their best advantage for a one on one matchup, but unable to get that so far. There's a double on the post. Kick out with five on the clock. Beverly drills it. Arlen Beverly has been fantastic over the last couple of games after struggling with his turnover issues in the first five games of the season. Well, Carter wanted to go back to back. And now Wichita State a chance to push. Shaw nearly took it off the rim, and that's what Quincy Acey and the Wichita State staff thought. Honor got tied up and a foul on Xavier Bell, which is the second on the Shockers starting guard. <laughs> what a smart heady play there by Honor. Realizes he had the defender on his back, and that's what they say put the defender in jail, just kind of slow up and dictate everything that's going to happen from that point. Picks up the foul on a team that lacks a lot of depth through the Shockers. So Bell will get a breather with two. And not a whole lot of depth on this Wichita State team. Dalen Ridgenall, who played at Georgia to start his college careers on the floor. Caleb Grill has checked into the game. He's a Wichita native. His dad played for the Shockers back in the 80s. At a Mays High School, taken away by Harlan Beverly. Shocker's looking for some momentum, and that one's off the side of the rim. It's rejected by Jordan Butler. And then a travel by Grill. Missouri is second in the country in block percentage at 19%. Both these teams have great quick hands. I wouldn't necessarily call them huge outside of seven foot five Kaner Connor Vanover, who's on the bench for Missouri. But these guys are extremely active, high IQ. You saw it there first with the steal by the Shockers and then the quick recovery by Missouri on what ordinarily would have been an easy two. Here's Rich Nall. He's a Kansas City native at a Rockers High School. And tied up. And great hands by Missouri and a near steal from Anthony Robinson the second. So, Tom, what Missouri is doing is they recognize Wichita State gets into most all of their offensive action with a simple dribble handoff. But they bust through it. They're trying to blow it up, and they say, no, we're not going to let you just do what you want, no matter if you're 20 feet away from the basket or 30. And so Wichita State really struggling to get what they would call their first entry pass in their offense. 
It's Colby Rogers trying to lead it. Got a screen and a pull-up jumper. That's off the mark. And a loose ball put back doesn't go. Wichita State fighting for it. And on the rebound, still a miss, but a foul. <laughs> We've got some guys battling down low. I think at one point that ball almost got kicked in the rim. About three different putback opportunities. Just continuing to fight for this ball. And Missouri's got to go after that thing with two hands. Too much patting it with one hand. And the Shockers, a point of emphasis for them through every practice. If you don't go after a ball with two hands, your butt's going to the treadmill. And you see it pay off there for Ballard. The foul was on Aiden Shaw, his second. Coming up at 5 Eastern, 4 Central over on ESPN, the third and final game of the 22nd annual women's Jimmy B Classic. Number 16, Ohio State, takes on 20th ranked Tennessee. Donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Go to V.org. Ballard knocks both free throws down. Here's East with the kick. And the three off the mark from Jordan Butler. Sean East. Gives it up there with the open pop three, but 55 and White has yet to take a shot in this game. He's averaging 20 over the last three for Missouri. A veteran backcourt for Mizzou and East and Honor out there together. The hands by Robinson. Shot clock late. Turnaround challenge two. What a shot by Colby Rogers. And there's very few in the country that have a higher success rate at long twos than Rogers does. Just better offense. Anthony Robinson with the pass to Grill. Aiden Shaw with the rebound. And a stolen possession for Mizzou. Here's East. And Beverly with the rebound. I think maybe East was feeling the fact that he hadn't squeezed one off yet. Mizzou led this game 10 0. Wichita State on a 7 0 run. Poke ahead to Robinson. His layup's good. Well, that's now seven turnovers. And if I'm not mistaken, five of them have been by steals, live ball. And Missouri now converting, and the difference in this game is the Shockers' inability to take care of the basketball and handle this Missouri pressure. Every bucket so far for Missouri has followed a Wichita State turn. Isaac Abide. Here's Robinson, freshman from Tallahassee. He is a good looking freshman. He doesn't look like a freshman on the court. 14 has really stood out early in this season. East will get it back. And he'll pull from straight ahead. Got it. Sean East for three. You just got to be aware. He is way more comfortable shooting off the bounce than off the catch. So when that ball's in his hand, you got to expect him to rise up and play him closer. Bide steps through. He gets one to go for Wichita State. He's playing 21 minutes a game for him. East with the crossover, and he buries the triple. I mean, not too many guys can just come down the court, dribble to their spot in the corner, make you fall, and then get the crowd high with back-to-back -back threes. Robinson picks up the foul in the backcourt. What a run by Sean East. Well, we were waiting for Sean East to get himself involved, and he may have hurt us because with back-to-back -back triples, starting to get this lead up for Missouri. If you don't close out, he's going to take advantage. And then, of course, on the baseline, Whoop. Gonna make the defender play a little game of twister. Right hand on red, left hand on green. <laughs> Bucket. Well, he's Missouri's all-time leading scorer from Jamaica, Queens, all the way to Boone County. Derek Chivas changed the way basketball was played here in mid-Missouri. Kemper Arena against those hated Jayhawks. And Missouri will meet up with Saturday in Lawrence. And his buddy Doc Nice on the floor. Lee Coward hit a couple of huge shots against Kansas back in the day. And one of Norm's best ever. Norm Stewart will be honored today, and man, and man, Derek Chivas with us now. It's it's an honor to have you here, and the reason you come to a lot of games, but your own, your own coach, Norm Stewart's being honored today. What does he mean to you, and what did he do to get a guy from Queens to Columbia, Missouri? Well, he had an uh, amazing assistant named Rich Daly. Yep. And Rich Daly uh, planted the seed, and then and, and, uh, Coach Stewart put the water on to make me grow. But uh, he's just an amazing person, and, and it's not just here in Mid Missouri; it's worldwide. Well, you guys were able to accomplish quite a bit. Of course, you being the leading scorer of all time, 
Ordinarily, I wouldn't do this, but I have a great friend who's too scared to ask for an autograph. Can you make this out to Tom Hart? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Tom, I had to, you know, I could tell how nervous you were for this interview. That's right. But uh, no, in all seriousness, you were known as the Band-Aid. Can you enlighten us on when and how that started where you always wore a Band-Aid, whether you needed it on or not? Well, it started when I was in junior high school. Uh, Suffered a cut over my eye. Still can't grow hair here. And I uh, had an amazing game. And I just wrote it. You know, I, I thought it was uh, a special superstition. And who knew it turned into what it, what it turned into. Dane, the, the stories about Derek Chivas playing at Missouri are legendary. But one thing that folks who watched him play were aware of is even though he was maybe the best athlete on the floor, you rarely dunked. No, that was your thing. Waste energy, man. All right, but I was told that there was a Friday night scrimmage in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where you guys got into a dunk contest and you blew the doors off of everybody. Facts. But uh, <laughs> I think a lot of my teammates knew I could dunk, but it was like I said, I, I would conserve the energy for other things. And the only time I would dunk was someone's impeding my progress. That's right. The Big Eight, uh, Wichita State, by the way, is playing like a Big Eight schedule. They still got Kansas State to come, and they got Kansas on December 30th. That was that was the league when you were playing college basketball, whether it's Billy Tubbs at Oklahoma or what Kansas was doing. What do you? What's your take on the state of college basketball today? Uh, extremely confusing. Yeah. And the reason I say it's confusing because you have the transfer portal. And then you have kids in high school, but I think they're going back to recruiting kids in high school. And like I said, I had a son. My son is at Panhandle, and his recruitment went so crazy because of the trans portal. And so I, I looked at it like, well, do you want to teach and, and grow kids, or do you want to get a, a, a quick fix? It's kind of hard to uh, invest your time with these players because they may not be here next year. So it, it's. The state of college basketball is starting to turn into a real business, but the players are starting to business, uh, benefit from the business. I, I also think just from a Wichita State perspective as well, like they had teams. There's Caleb Grill with the jumper. And Xavier McDaniel, the X-Man, got there. He was allowed to learn from older players when he was a freshman. Absolutely. He was able to lead the nation in scoring and rebounding by the time his, uh, his career was done. How much did you grow between your freshman year when you left for the NBA? by leaps and bounds, uh, meaning uh, I came to Missouri when I was 16, so I was still green. And when I entered the league, I was still young. I was 20. But coach instilled in, in hard work and, 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 and great ethics, man. So if you do those things, man, that translates anywhere you go. And I know it seems lost on the college basketball world where you got guys three schools, four years. I'm not knocking those guys. But I think you could attest that your legend at Missouri probably doesn't happen if you just came in for one year and balled out. I mean, it was the, the uh, crowd and community getting to know you from your freshman year on. Would you agree? Absolutely. But on my side, I had a strict mother, lover. She wouldn't let me go on nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted a piece of paper for her, for her hard work. Stylistically, how do you like the game today? So much five men spread you out, not as much, you know, dump it down the post, grind it out. It's extremely confusing because I'm used to grind. I'm used to trap, you know, everything is analytics. And I tell people all the time, analytics can't judge your heart. I mean, I wouldn't want my seven footer shooting threes. I want them in the paint, put somebody on a poster. But like I said, with time, time changes and, and so forth. But for me, if I'm 7'5", I'm going to throw you in the rim every time because I'll get 3D old-fashioned way. Well, Connor Vanover, if there was ever a time to make a three, it is right now because <laughs> Derek Chivas <laughs> puts you down on the block dunking on dudes. <laughs> the three-point line came around when you were already here at Mizzou, but I, I think analytics with you would have said, here's a guy who's one of the best mid-range players because he can back you down and get to the free-throw line. Do you think that's accurate? Like 15 and in. Yeah, but you have to ask your question. Am I going to bail a defensive player by shooting a shot that I can't make 60% of the time? Whereas I can make a midi and I can take you to the basket 60 to 70%. It's all about being effective and efficient. And if I'm effective and efficient, you're going to have to play defense. That's right. And I, I, I got a lot of free throws, so it evened out. Hey, before we uh, cut you loose, you mentioned that Norm's going to be honored at, at halftime here. Obviously, such an impactful figure. 
coaches versus cancer in, in all of college basketball. Here's Nick Honor for three. And Carter couldn't finish with the tap back. What, what are some of the lessons that you learned from him over the years? Uh, something my mother told me a long time ago, but I really didn't quite grasp it. She used to say, when you're on earth, you have to pay rent. And if you watch the things that Coach Stewart has done over the years with coaches from cancer, uh, his players, he's paid a lot of rent, man, and he's helped a lot of people, and he continues to do that because he's always been a given person. And that's basically, if you look at his, his everybody will look at the scores and who he sent to the pros, but if you look what he's done, for for a nation, yeah, you know, it, it, it's, you can't you can't put a price tag on it. I love it when we get the chance to celebrate the history of college basketball. The, you're the best scorer in the history of this program. Who, who's some of the best players you win against on a regular basis in your college career? Ooh. Uh, one that you might not know, but I, I actually got a chance to play with him. His name was Anthony Bowie. Played at oh, Oklahoma. Sure. Uh, the obvious, Danny Manning, uh, Mitch Richmond. But uh, Anthony Bowie was a problem. He never stood still, man. He never stood still. You guys had absolute battles in the in the. Uh, oh, I'm eight. sorry, and I don't want to forget about my guy Jeff Gray. I love you, Jeff. Oh. Iowa State superstar, but the Missouri-Kansas rivalry is back. It'll be on ESPN next Saturday for Lawrence after a hiatus when Mizzou came to the SEC of 10 years. What does that mean to you as a guy who wore the black and gold? It's kind of difficult to try to put a pulse on it because, like I said, you got guys in the transfer portal. They'll play that one year, but they won't know the essence of the rivalry. Yeah. So it's kind of difficult to explain to them from a player's perspective or even at, as a coach perspective because, hey, you may not be here next year. Norm instilled that in you early on, I would assume, the entire program, what that rivalry meant. I, I, don't, think, I don't think he did that to no, me because really. I, wanted, I wanted to get everybody. That's right. And then you got to remember coming from New York, I wasn't getting too many television games until later on. Right. So playing Kansas, you know, that was your television game. So I, I was I was locked in. You had to show up for everybody. Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was locked in. Being from New York, uh, I would imagine it sounds like you didn't really have any hesitation. You didn't care who the upper class were. I mean, how would you describe for somebody like 14 and White here, Robinson, who's a good-looking freshman, uh, what would you say to him in terms of not being bashful and going out there and, and getting yours and acting like you belong? The thing that every player has to remember, especially when you come on your recruiting trip, look and see where you fit in. Then when you get here, they brought you here for a reason. Don't try to be somebody else. Be who they brought you to be. And, and that's the best advice I can ever give because you get a lot of guys who will come in and you don't fit the system and then you wasted a year and you go in the portal. When you came on a visit, you actually seen the way they play. Yeah. Do you see, what do you see yourself in? So I stress that a lot. See, Tom, that's why I immediately started setting screens. <laughs> there you go. I, I knew why I was brought there. <laughs> Don't be anybody. Else. And that's an asset to the team. You got somebody who can yeah, score open. Yeah. I knew my strengths and weaknesses. Find the scores. Find the shooters. Got you, man. Derek Chivas, yeah. thanks for stopping by. Love man. you guys, really man. Great. Happy holidays lot. to both of y'all. Thanks, thanks you Give Coach Stewart our best. Absolutely. We'll be at halftime. Legendary Hall of Fame coach Norm Stewart will be honored. And a follow jam by Quincy Ballard. He's got four. Missouri hanging on to a seven-point lead. And this Wichita State team, Dane, finding its footing a little bit on the offensive end after such a sloppy start. Uh, they only average ten turnovers a game, and yet they've got nine. So, like you said, once they started to take care, better care of the basketball after that first four-minute span, you get shots. A lot of good things can happen. The other team shooting the lights out, both at 33%. Missouri just won for its last seven. Corner three. And the loose ball going to bounds. I'm going to put that uh, Derek Chivas autograph right next to my John Sundle. Nice. I didn't know he actually signed it. I'm happy for you. <laughs> yeah, great. You get that frame. Missouri with a seven point lead against the Shockers of Wichita State. I guess the biggest surprise, especially the time we spent with Paul Mills at shoot around, is that it's an area of focus for Wichita State. In the past few games, they have been much better, and his programs historically are. But it's one thing to see it on film, it's another thing to have your scout team. But to be out here on the court in an opposing team's arena that is their bread and butter, so they had a little bit of a wake up call. I believe they were at six turnovers before that, four, uh, that first media timeout. So it has gotten a little bit better.
and see if they can improve upon that. They better if they want a chance to win this one on the road. Yeah, they started the game 0 for 6 with six turnovers. Missouri led this thing 10 nothing. And then the Tigers have gone cold without a field goal in the last three minutes, opening a door for the Shockers to get back in this thing. Xavier Bell's playing with two fouls. He had to sit for a moment. Shot clock late again for the Shockers. Here's Kenny Poto. 7 5 Connor Van overguarded. Yeah, they need to run more offense through him because that's his second assist now. Once he kicked it out for the three, that time he lobs over the top. He really can play a point center type role for them out of the post. Quincy Ballard with the touch right over the rim. Here's Van over. One for six from three. You heard Derek Chivas talking about that earlier. Finding your role, and he is a unicorn. Van over is, can do a lot of different things. Rebounded by the Shockers. And Harlan Beverly, junior from Detroit. Beverly kicks. Open three from the corner. And it's Kenny Poto with his first points of the game. I know we highlighted the guards, but that's really the game within the game. Poto and Carter, they both bring some mismatch opportunities for each of their respective squads. And right now, the past couple of possessions, advantage Poto. Shockers have made 50% from three, four of eight. Half their field goals have come from behind the arc. Timeout on the floor here at Mizzou. Tigers leading Shockers by two. So good at taking opposing bigs off the bounce. If you put a smaller guy on him, he'll back you down. And Poto's kind of right there in between where he can move his feet a little bit and still take away Carter's back down game. So 11 and black starting to take away one of the advantages Missouri typically has. Carter going hard into Kenny Poto, the junior from Stockholm, Sweden. Played locally at Sunrise Christian Academy in Wichita. I love the aggressive drive there by Carter. Get yourself to the free throw line. He settled for the three a couple of times. And especially with this Wichita State team that doesn't have a lot of depth. Get them going to their bench or having to play with three fouls to where they're not quite as aggressive. No Carter 75% shooter from the free throw line this season and knocks down the first 29th annual Jimmy V Classic is at Madison Square Garden again this year Tuesday night on ESPN and the ESPN app 13th ranked FAU matches up with number 24 Illinois at 630 Eastern then it's number 17 North Carolina against fourth ranked UConn always a great night for a great cause to donate to the Jimmy V Foundation go to V.org speaking of North Carolina you got to see them in person last week game in Chapel Hill that looked really good especially the first half they put up over 60 I believe or right at 60 against the Tennessee team that came into the game number one defensively in the country and I've just never seen a Tennessee defense get shredded the way they were by North Carolina now the bad news is North Carolina couldn't stop them very much either a high scoring affair but two great squads that you'll see deep in March Ona leaves it short Here's Grill, or Mays High School superstar, numerous sports, including quarterback. To Nick Honor. Got it! Second three of the game for Honor. If you aren't there on the catch, you are too late. Xavier Bell hasn't scored. Colby Rogers has only five. They combine for 40% of the Shockers scoring on the season. Here's East around the screen. And it's off the mark from Trent Pierce. Poto running the floor. High off the window. Well, he got stuck under the basket, but still got that thing up and in off the top of the glass. A terrific touch on an awkward situation there for a finish. Another one for East. He's got eight. And that just can't happen if you're Wichita State. Left, left handed point guard, go left to a spot with no resistance. Nice shot by East, but poor defense by the Shockers. Will is all up in Harlan Beverly. Got a half step on him. And it's rebounded by Trent Pierce. And that shows the switchability of Missouri. I mean, you had 6'3 Sean East on the center Ballard at 6'11, but Wichita State unable to take advantage. Here's Grill from deep. Drills it. 
parents in the building tonight. And Caleb Grills got his first triple. Tigers back up by double digits. Bell downhill gets Mabor Majak and he gets it. He got good speed. Grill got clipped on that screen and that created a one-on-one -on -one opportunity against the big man that just can't quite keep up with the uh, footwork of Bell. Pierce swings it to honor. Another three. And a rebound brought down by Harlan Beverly. Montverde product who played at Miami before coming to Wichita. Here's Rodgers. He splashes down his second three of the game. Uh, I just can't emphasize enough the court vision and quick passing by Poto. When he gets it in the post there, he's got three assists now. And those have been the best looks for the Shockers that time Rodgers knocking it down. He's directing traffic, shot clock at eight. Lefty trying to get downhill. Swings it all the way into the corner for Grill. And a shot clock violation, but Wichita State had the rebound. Great recovery in the corner. Mismatch. Beverly's got the seven footer Majak on. Beverly going to work on the seven foot two center. Took a bump. Here's Bell for three. Huge three for Xavier Bell, who's got five in a hurry, and it's a one possession game. Well, it wasn't pretty, but the biggest thing Beverly did there was hang on to the ball, not losing it, gathering it, and the whole defense collapsed, leading to the open shot. Shockers on an eight nothing run. East, 14 footers short, but an offensive rebound and Honor tees it up. Third three of the half for Nick Honor. Best time to get an open three is off a missed shot offensive rebound as the defense was scrambling. Honor was right there. Tigers had been in a slump. Now they get one back. Here's Rogers splitting the screen. That's his shot though. He loves the mid range. He's got a hand from Xavier Bell, and that is his third personal. The Bell's going to have to be careful. 124 left in the half. Missouri clinging to a five-point advantage. You time. went to some of those Norm Stewart basketball camps as oh, a yeah, kid, no. though, and Derek Chivas was like, yeah, I don't, don't remember <laughs> handing you the MVP. No, my guy Lynn Hardy, Doc Nice, was the point guard on those Derek Chivas teams he's here and a uh, young Tom Hart when Lynn came by to speak to the campers asked if there are any questions and I peppered him with like 48 different questions and he's like this kid to leave already Sean East with the free throw he's got another one coming what a great personality Sean East is grad transfer from Louisville started at UMass and Bradley then found his game at Logan Community College and he mentioned to us earlier today how, look, they have an old team with some graduate seniors, but he still says they, they still feel new because everybody's in this new enhanced role without guys like Hodge and Kobe Brown. Stolen away by the freshman Robinson, and he finishes at the other end. Well, he's a guy that can help you replace Des Moines Hodge from last year, who was so good at getting those steals and converting them to easy twos. He's got the link athleticism and anticipation skills. That steal rate helped Missouri be top five in the country in points per game. Not quite there yet this season, middle of the pack in the SEC. Shot clock at four. Poto gets fouled on a reach in by Connor Vanover. How about the freshman Anthony Robinson? And the first thing Dennis Gates talks about him is not just his wingspan, but his competitive nature. Comes from a sports background family. And look, I'm telling you, this guy pops off the film. You, you, you don't look at him as a freshman. He is here and he has earned his minutes. And the more he does of that, the more he'll be on the court. His mom is a great track athlete, played junior college basketball. His dad, Anthony, was a baseball star at 
Florida A&M and then later coach at FAMU for a couple of seasons. Now the athletic director, North State University High School, Kenny Poto, free throw line. And Missouri has harassed Wichita State into 10 turnovers here in the first half. They were doubling their season average. And I think Wichita State's going to say, look, it, we got off to a bad start, but we may be up, lucky to only be down seven or whatever it might be to end the first half because their two priorities were take away the three. They've given up seven three balls and take care of the basketball. Ten of the turnovers you mentioned. Eight steals for Mizzou. Here's Robinson and Sean East. Little run for Kurt Lewis here in the first half. Twelve different players have seen the floor for Missouri in the first half. Robinson for three. That was halfway down, rebounded by Lewis. And Missouri keeps possession. Shot clock off, 13 on the game clock. If I'm East, I'm not passing this ball. He's your best one-on-one -on -one player. Goes to his strong side. Five. And now he's got to get rid of it. Van over for three and seven five. They would have brought the house down. A wild first half. Missouri puts up 41 points, thanks in large part to eight steals. And the Tigers with 16 points off Wichita State turnovers. 41 34, the lead. Let's get you to the studio. Down cuff in the boys. When they're in the half court. 16 points off turnovers from Missouri. Wichita State does on the edge on the glass. Plus seven there. So if you're Coach Gates, you can say, hey guys, continue to be aggressive. But we got to do better in the half court offense ourselves. We can't just bank on getting another 14 to 16 points off turnovers in this second half. Seventh meeting all time between these programs. Missouri leads the series five wins to one. Tamar Bates gives it up to Noah Carter. He's keeping it. Shot clock at two. And a rebound to Wichita State. That's been a huge advantage for them, helping them hang in this game by dominating the glass. Xavier Bell was limited due to foul trouble in the first half, picked up his third. With 124 to play in a second at the 15 minute mark. Beverly with the dump down, Nick Honor with the steal. Honor gets beat off the dribble. His five man bails him out and he still gets the steal. Now back the other way, Harlan. Beverly lost it. Been that kind of day for Wichita State. You talk about making up for your mistakes. Look no further than Nick Honor. He got beat off the bounce, still forced the turnover. That time they turn it over, he says, no problem, guys. I'm back here. I'll get us the ball back. As soon as Wichita State was able to get it on the path to get an easy two, Missouri ball. Well, look, it seemed like Harlan Beverly, after he didn't play the game against St. Louis, sat on the bench, learned a lot, had really cleaned up his turnover issues. Last two games, 15 assists to just one turnover. But of the 11 turnovers today by Wichita State, he's committed six of them. Carter draws the foul on Kenny Poto, his second. And there's Carter. I like him again. We saw him towards the end of the first half say, I'm not going to settle for the three, even though Poto is backing off me. I'm going to drive at him. And when Carter's driving, even when he drives left, left about 95% of the time he is coming back right with a spin move or getting back to that right hand you can't take the bait so he hasn't missed a free throw today 11 for 11 it's a seven point difference at the free throw line for Missouri versus Wichita State another one coming for Carter so quiet I could hear you thinking that's a disciplined crowd right there Figure out what bowl the Tennessee Volunteers are playing in yet. Citrus. Oh, there you go. Can't spell citrus about UT. Oh, look at you. Head ball coach. Here's a Shaw with, pardon me, that's Tamar Bates with the finish and flush. 12th turnover of the game for the Shockers. Well, there are some similarities in Dennis Gates' second team versus what he had last year and how they are able to turn the defense into momentum. 
Offensively, you better shorten your passes. That is too long of a pass against this long athletic Missouri team. And I know I've said it more than once, but that right there is their best offense. And it gets the crowd going. It gets their team and their bench going. and allows them to get in this press as well. Pota with the ball fake and the three. And then a foul on the rebound will be charged. Missouri's Aiden Shaw, that is his third. And Tom, as part of my prep for this game, of course, nobody better to call than John Sunball. And I talked about, hey, don't you have to kind of have some guys that can put it on the deck through traffic, create their own? Because you can't swing the ball on the perimeter much. And he said Jackson State and Memphis were both successful at doing that. And that's something Wichita State just doesn't seem to have within their personnel right now. Turnover number 13. Honors pass gets away from Shaw. Missouri gives it right back. Four on three. Beverly blocked from behind by Aiden Shaw. Aiden Shaw only played eight minutes in that first half due to two fouls. But he was challenged by Dennis Gates to get more rebounds during his action. He had four in just eight minutes. And it's that type of hustle activity. And he's continued that same energy here in the second half evidenced by that big time block saving this team two points seventh in the country for 14 percent block rate black leaders in the SEC Shaw over two a game and then Carter got a little too much and commits a foul on Poto first on Noah Carter Eleven point Missouri lead. Here's Rogers going past two, and it's another block for Shaw. And that's all scouting report by Shaw. He knows Rogers does not want to go to the rim. Only ten shots at the rim all season. Four wants to pull up. Shot clock at two. And a shot clock violation. I think Rogers is going to have to add that to his game a little bit. Teams are sitting on that pull-up jumper, take an extra couple dribbles, try to force the action at the rim. Wichita State was coming off of a midweek win against Richmond at five and double figures and ever trailed in that game. Moved the record is seven to 7-1 for the first time in four years. They look discombobulated today. Loose ball, Shaw got his hands on it. Gives it to Honor, and the result is a foul on Wichita State. Shaw's fingerprints have been all over this game when he's not been in foul trouble. It's little things like that, getting those 50-50 balls. Instead of him going up with a tough two, he's feeding it to Carter down low, creating an extra possession for his team. Look for a little flex action here when they do this. One, four low. East coming off this screen from Honor and Honor. There's a swing to Honor. Floater off the back of the rim. And a blocking foul. And, and Tom, we talked in the first half about how one of Missouri's goals was to really disrupt the dribble handoff that Wichita State likes to initiate their offense in. It, it's been a while since we've seen the Shockers even try to do that. And so now they're having to adjust to Missouri's style of play, and it's got them out of sync in the half court offense. That's a fourth on Aiden Shaw. So they have to take a seat. Had a couple of blocks in the last five minutes. Rodgers contested three right over the top of Nick Connor. He's better contested than uncontested. That doesn't make any sense, but I hear you. <laughs> he is. Now Grill left open. Chance for Wichita State. Bell into Grill. Got the reach in and up count the bucket. One of the few fast break opportunities 
The long miss leads to a little bit of a long rebound, and Bell makes him pay, just forces the issue. And Grill didn't think he fouled him. Certainly, if he knew he fouled him, he would have fouled him harder than that. But a big time and one opportunity. Credit the Shockers. Every time you think Missouri's going to start to build the double digit lead and run away, they have some sort of answer. Xavier Bell had a great trip on Myrtle Beach Invitational, averaging 19 and 7 in that one. Two seasons at Drexel. For returning to Wichita. He was a star at Andover Central, and he's named after one of the great shockers ever, the X-Man. Xavier Bell's dad, Wayne, played football at Wichita State. About the same time, Xavier McDaniel was leading the country in scoring and rebounding. Here's Sean East. Nice dunk down and the flush for Jordan Butler. Bell in the paint. And if it's Tamar Bates who came out of there with it. Here's East. Try to get into Beverly. Beverly nearly took it away. Then East commits his second. Sean East is so good at probing the defense, giving, keeping his dribble alive. You'll see it here on this ball screen. Just says, all right, you're going to commit to on me? No problem. I'll make the simple play. Easy two for Missouri. Trying to pull away from the Shockers. Wichita State still with the advantage on the glass plus 12. 11 steals for Missouri. Talking to Paul Mills at their shoot around about being analytically driven and kind of where he got to a point in his career. And he said, listen, I'm a big points per possession guy because not only does it value good shots and it's weighted obviously value the three point shot, but it also takes into account turnovers. Shot clock is late for the Shockers. Rogers sees it, gets rid of it with one and got it. Wow. Rogers just bails Wichita State out. They had some tough pass and catch situations there. But able to get a shot up out of it out the end. And a travel on freshman Jordan Butler, one of three seven footers on this Mizzou roster. He'll be replaced by another seven footer, bring seven foot five Connor Vanover into the game. Where's that number 75? Because well, it's an easy way to answer the height question. <laughs> you should walk around campus with a sticker. <laughs> 75. <laughs> Xavier Bell driving on East and Vanover. Rogers back to Bell. They were a quiet one two punch in the first half. And the three is off from Dana Richnall, the former Georgia Bulldog. Here's East with the drive. And the left reverse. Nice job of clearing out that backside by Missouri. And East had the driving lane all to himself. Shockers did not rotate over for the help. Here's Colby Rogers in a reaching foul on Anthony Robinson, the second. That is his third. Coming up at 5 Eastern, 4 Central over on ESPN, the third and final game of the 22nd annual Women's Jimmy B Classic. For 16, Ohio State takes on 20th ranked Tennessee. To donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, go to V.org. I want to go back to that last defensive play by Robinson. To put that much ball pressure full court, bother the opponent, then sprint ahead of them and cause a push off is an exceptional play, especially for a freshman. Robinson got free. And the rebound pulled down by Ballard. Loss of the way in. It's turnover number 17 for Wichita State. Compared to just five for Mizzou. Bijan Cortez, the transfer that's sitting out waiting on eligibility. 
out of Oklahoma would be another ball handler and shooter for this Wichita State team they could certainly use right now. Here's Richnall with the steal. Carter the reach in and they're going to count it another and one on a lazy reach in from Mizzou. A little taste of their own medicine. Great anticipation by Richnall. And they need to get him going. I mean, he, he can be a double digit type scorer for them. Scoreless in that first half. But sticks with it. If your shot's not going, just focus and make a play on defense. And that is certainly a way to get the lid off the rim for him. Started his college career playing for Tom Crean. Rogers getting a breather here. B Day back on the floor for Wichita State. How many times have we said it, Tom? You feel like Missouri is going to break away with this game, like they're in control. They've played much better than Wichita State. You look up, it's only a four point game. Robinson finds Vanover. Seven fiver missed the dunk and would go to the free throw line. Ballard commits his second. Connor Vanover sure is an interesting story. Started his college career playing for the Cal Bears. He's an Arkansas native out of Arkansas Baptist Prep in Little Rock. And eventually transferred back home to play for the Razorbacks. Ended up going to Oral Roberts to play for Wichita State head coach Paul Mills. Had several homes, but there was always someone there that would welcome and open the door for a seven foot five guy. Well, even at his own home, there are plenty of pants that fit. Both of his brothers are seven footers. One of whom was the saxophone player in the Alabama marching band. Missouri, 14 of 14 from the free throw line today. Beverly gives it up. Abide with the three. Missouri gave up the dribble penetration. They had the switch out, but it was Vanover having to guard the. Opponent's point guard, which calls for easy dribble penetration. He's out to Vanover. He's not afraid to pull it. His second three of the season for the seven foot five grad student. Remember the Haley twins shooting threes, but it works for Connor Vanover. Here's Beverly with the corner turn down the lane. And the follow rolls in for Quincy Ballard. Well, as Vanover helped over for the block, nobody was able to block out Vanover's man, Ballard, who does a terrific job crashing the offensive boards. And Adams wanted to stop play, and make sure they had it right. And Pets. Going to let him play on. No bother to go back for monitor. We'll make sure everything was clean there. East goes with his right. Out to Grill. And the Wichita native is his second triple of the game. You have to move when East is penetrating. If you stare and watch, you're doing yourself a disservice because he has his eyes up looking for his teammates as much as his shot. Caleb Grill grew up a Wichita State fan thanks to his dad playing there and being a local, a huge fan of that Final Four team in 2013. Original for three. And the rebound is found by Anthony Robinson. He splits the defense again. Carter fights for the rebound, and it's taken away again by the Shockers. Loose ball corralled by Xavier Bell. Push ahead, tipped. And then Beverly gives it up. Turnover number 18. Foul on the screen back to Como in a moment. Seven point lead for the home team. In addition to those five assists, three steals. Pat Adams is the head official today. There was a little skirmish right when we went to break with uh, Dale Richnall near the Missouri huddle. The officials had to break up, and Pat wanted to take a further look at it. This was 
after Reginald had already left that area of the floor. But emotions running high, so it's like Pat's taking a look and he's good with nothing further. It really goes back a play or two before that after the foul on the other end. All right, Adams giving us the explanation now to Tom. Thanks to Pat Adams. Double technical foul on Noah Carter and Dalen Ridgenall. Those technicals out offset, and it's each player's third personal foul. Now, that's a little bit more impactful for Wichita State, which only goes seven deep, than Missouri, which goes 13 deep if this thing stays a competitive game. Beverly had committed a foul right before the break, a personal foul. Here's the live to Vanover. That's a high percentage one. Missouri continues to just do ball screen type action for Sean East here in the second half. And who can blame them? They've been getting positive results in their half-court offense when 55 has the ball. And they're going to get Vanover for the foul. It's his second. East just comes off this ball screen. He draws so much attention, and Vanover who has shown he can pick and pop that time rolls keeps it high makes it real simple. So Isaac Abide to the free throw line third year sophomore out of Albany Georgia and Westover High School. Late bloomer a little bit under the radar coming out of high school. Finally got to Wichita State. Middle August, his freshman year didn't play 21 22. Just took a red shirt. Wednesday, December 13th on the SEC Network and ESPN as well. We'll have the exclusive reveal of next year's SEC football schedule. 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Complete breakdown for each school and the top matchups for 24. Oklahoma and Texas joining the league. There's a tip in by Ridgenal. He's got five. That cannot happen if you're Missouri to give up an offensive rebound on a missed free throw when you have the inside position set. Carter aggressive. Original is taking this game personal. I don't know where the chippiness initially occurred, but it's gotten personal right now for 10 and Black. Vita in the back cut couldn't squeeze it. The bell is there. East harasses him. It was tipped. No backcourt violation. Even though Bell never lost his dribble. Shot clock at four. Beverly has it redirected by Vanover, and it's a shot clock violation against Wichita State. <laughs> I think he had the angle on Carter, but right behind Carter was seven foot five. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm open here, but there's a second layer to it, and I just don't trust getting it over that guy. But. You'd rather it be a dead ball turnover than a block shot in Missouri going off to the races. At least Wichita State can set their defense now. That is turnover number 19. Nick Honor back on the floor. Freshman Robinson gets a breather. And Aiden Shaw is playing with, in foul troubles back on the floor for Missouri. All right, this is a really silly question. Does Sean East dribble too much? No, but in a college basketball world where everybody says don't let the ball stick, don't dribble the air out of it, he's an exception. I mean, let him take as many bounces as he needs to to create for himself or others. Vanover went spilling, and it will stay with Missouri after the near steal from Richmond. But to go back to that, 20 out of his 22 makes over the past three games have all been off the bounce and actually averaging five dribbles over five dribbles. So that, that's what it takes. And you got to adjust your personnel. Let him probe the defense, work it off the bounce, size guys up, give a little hezzy. He's got so many moves and so crafty that you don't want to overcoach and say, hey, Sean, get the ball moving. Get it going quicker. Two dribbles max. He, he's just not that type of player. Into the corner for Shaw. And it's knocked out of bounds by Missouri. Wichita State basketball. Shockers down six. Despite the high turnover total, they've been able to negate some of that by being good on the glass. And Paul Mills' team is right there. Hey. 
mentioned the fact that Wichita State only plays seven and Missouri willing to play everybody who's wearing a uniform. Talked to Dennis Gates about it at shoot around. So again, it goes back to my Florida State days. Leonard Hamilton, we had so many guys. And look at this, seven players off the bench contributing 25 points for Missouri. That's plus 11 over the two off the bench for the Shockers. Honor downhill. Couldn't hit the layup. Here comes Wichita State down six. Xavier Bell slipped through. Now a three from Beverly's block. Got it back and goes with the left. Nice defense by Missouri. Beverly just with a heads up play and became five on four with an open lane after the defender flew at the shot. That's another high percentage look. That's Butler. Uh, they've just had no answer. And the guard's got to get back and get in front because that drop coverage that they use where the screener's defender is dropping down. East is just exploiting that. Valdo Bide. Tom, I think the Shockers have to get 11. Poto the ball, uh, especially with Carter um, not guarding them. They've got the met, uh, matchup on Butler. I think they can get some good things out of 11. East went around Poto. Here's Carter. That's an air ball from the corner. Missouri's taking 28 threes tonight. 28 of their 50 attempts, they've only made nine of them. Xavier Bell off the front rim. I don't think either team has been over 40% shooting at any point in this game. Poto. Another miss. And Grill brings it down. In this game going up and down, getting some rhythm to it. That's advantage Missouri. They've got the fresher body, fresher legs. Shockers have made just one of uh, their last seven. East splits the deep and lays it in. We've talked about the turnovers, but the other uh, difference in this game is Missouri has 55 and Wichita State Dutton. East has been sensational with the ball in his hands. He's got 14 points and eight assists. Photo pulls down the miss, Abide again. There's a lid on that basket for Wichita State. You're not kidding, the quality of looks they've had from deep has been there the past few possessions. Grill downhill, wow, he went for a tomahawk and went down hard. Grill's got 10 points and seven boards, and he'll get attention for the Missouri Athletic Training Staff. Return to Mizzou Arena in a moment. All right, thanks, gentlemen. If anybody's on the training block, it's going to be Seth's glasses. I like blind Seth better. Well, meanwhile, Caleb Grill went down hard after that failed dunk attempt. His parents in the building tonight. That's his dad, Chris, next to his mom, Lena. Here's another look. And they took another look. The officials did at the foul. What'd you learn? And they're going to upgrade this to a flagrant one because the shooter, Dunker, in that case, was in a vulnerable position. So it's going to be two shots and the ball for Missouri. Now, because Grill is unable to shoot the shot or free throws, Missouri's going to be able to pick their own player to come in what do you, and shoot for it. What do you think about that as a flagrant? I didn't think it was in real time. They said he felt they felt like he pulled him down a little bit on the way down. T to me, I felt like it was a basketball play and that the biggest culprit to that fall was the rim. Yeah, I agree with you. So Missouri sent Sean East to the free throw line. 81% free throw shooter. And due to the fact that Grill left due to injury. Missouri can pick the free throw shooter. Grill was a multi sport star at Mays High School in Wichita. The school record for passing yards is the quarterback. His eyes lit up when I talked about high school football today. He said, Listen, basketball was my sport, but football was so much fun. The camaraderie you have with your teammates, they had a great run, made it to the 
Semis of the state championship. Also, Breach Hall, his team out of Wichita. Now playing for the Jets. I'm sure he could attest that football background has given him that toughness needed on the court. Out to Bates. Back like a 10. Our Bates, Indiana transfer. Shot clock now at four. Here's East. And off the rim. Six and a half to play. Wichita State trailing by nine. Shockers in the scoring guard of 220 plus. The floater. Colby Rogers, 15. What a big turn of events. Missouri had two free throws and the ball. They only get one point out of that situation. Wichita State comes down, gets a layup, keeps this thing well within striking distance. Here's Bates. And he's able to draw the foul from Kenny Poto. Third on Poto. Well, it's been a point of emphasis for Dennis Gates. They want to get to the free throw line more. As much as they like to shoot the three ball, and over half of their shots are from three, they've been dominating this game at the stripe. 15 of 16 compared to just eight trips for the Shockers. And so here's Bates out of Kansas City Piper High School. The great player Piper in the Jordan Brand game and then ended up in Indiana. Two years at IU, played 20 minutes a game. He got his first start last time out against Pitt. A really nice addition for this team. I mean, when things break down, he's another guy that can put the ball, give you a two dribble pull up jumper at late in the shot clock, get his own. He's very back in the free throw train, 17 of 18 after the miss after the flake. Hard screen from Poto. And then a reach in from Bates. It's his second. And Wichita State in the bonus. Well, the bonus for both teams early here, well, with, with five minutes to go, but for Wichita State, this is really important. Uh, we've talked a lot about the depth. Missouri having fresher bodies, playing 13 guys versus just seven for Wichita State. And this is one way to catch your breath, stop the clock, and get into this lead. Rodgers hits the front end of a one on one. Two seasons at Cal Poly coming out of Roselle Catholic in New Jersey. Then a year at Siena, where he was their leading scorer, 14 points a game. And he knocks them both down to big free throws. It's a seven point game. Nick Goddard pulls. The veteran way off the mark. That was early in a game where Wichita State is trying to grab momentum, and Dennis Gates kind of looking down at his veteran guard. No words needed, but he could get that shot anytime. And rarely do you question the decision making of honor, but see if Wichita State can take advantage. And they can't. Guess who has it in his hands? It's Sean East. But Dennis Gates talked to you earlier about the veteran backcourt. He said, look, when they make a mistake, I know they're smart enough to learn from it. I don't have to pull. That's a good feed. And Connor Van over at 7 5 throws it down. He said, with experience comes grace. And I give them room to make some mistakes. And the mistakes Wichita State's make on the defensive end. As they get the and one there, but they are just letting the big man roll and get behind the defense. Way too often is Missouri, specifically East, able to just probe the defense and say, all right, my big seven foot five guys behind you guys, I'll throw it up. If they're going to switch, then they got to switch aggressively. And a nice back cut there. We've talked about Poto's court vision on full display there with the bounce pass back door. Three point play turned in by Harlan Beverly. He's got eight. Connor Vanover on the other side from Missouri has a season high 11. That's better. Switch to that commit and help down if you have to instead of letting him get behind. Honor shares it to Carter. Spin move and the left is off. A great job by Wichita State. Knowing he likes to go right, you forced him to that weak hand. Beverly gets through. What a move. He is crafty. How good is that? 
Missouri, no help defense there. It just slices through the defender to the opposite side of the rim. It's a four point game suddenly. And Harlan Beverly, the junior from Detroit by way of Miami, is able to finish at the rim. Shocker's not going anywhere. Utah State comes with an answer. Usually 20 has been involved. And he's also been a big reason why they've been able to mount this comeback from a ball handling standpoint. Yes, seven turnovers, but as a team, only three in the last 10 minutes. And so if they can continue just to get shots on that end of the court, they've been able to find some success. Good to see Caleb Grill back on the floor for Missouri after he exited with that hard foul. It's another switch that they've done here. Instead of trying to defend this ball screen differently, they're just switching it. East can't knock it down. Door open for Wichita State. Down four. That's why East had to pull up there. He wasn't able to get that two-on-one opportunity off the ball screen. Beverly downhill with the left hand. Missouri's largest lead was 11 early in the second half. That is nearly whittled away for a Shocker team that has yet to lead in this game. Dennis Gates looked at his coaching staff like, what the heck was that on the defensive end? Grill out to Shaw. Here's East. Back to Grill. Dudes three for Caleb Grill. Third of the game. How tough is that? Coming off the injured wrist. Gets subbed in the game. Money right away. 13 points and seven boards for the Wichita native. It's his dad's team. Rodgers. Man over cut him off. Crowd getting into it now. Bell. Over Van over and Grill. He loves that left hand. And he might start right, but he's going to spin back as he did there. And a tough two by Which, Bell. Wichita State takes a timeout. It's a one possession game at 3.06 to go. Well, this was an easy two for Wichita State. But then Bell comes in and says, I get it the hard way. But before that, there's Grill with the big time three in the corner. That was a weakness of Missouri's defense last season. As good as they were of turning you over, they did not win the rebound ba battle often. And Coach Mills of Wichita State told us last night at Shearer, and I said, look, we're, we're pretty good on the glass. I, I think that's an opportunity for us. Now they've got 16 offensive rebounds. So again, if they could not turn it over and get the ball on the glass, it gives them a great opportunity for second chance points, given the fact that Missouri has not been strong in that category. Honor and East in the backcourt for Mizzou. Three minutes to play in regulation. Carter finds Grill, gets cut off. Back out to Carter. And rebounded by Harlan Beverly. Rebound number 16. And a well-scouted play by Wichita State. That slip from Grill right there on that other end of the court is the same after timeout play they ran against Pitt. Got a great look. Wichita State was all over it, forced to kick out three. Missouri with a Tuesday road win at Pitt in the ACC SEC challenge. Challenge was split thanks to Georgia's comeback in the final game of it. Bell for three. It was halfway down, and then Carter lost it. It'll be Wichita State basketball. Missed opportunity there. I mean, just going after it casually with one hand and both teammates deflecting it from one another. Missouri's got to come down with that uh, board. Here's Rodgers. Poto all alone. And they're going to dare him to shoot at seven foot five. Connor Vanover did not even leave the paint. Now Vanover with the post up. Guarded by Beverly. Out to East. He'll tee it up. Knocks it down. Assist to Connor Vanover. Here's Beverly now. Two minutes to play in Columbia. Beverly lets it go. And an over the back foul will go against Wichita State. Well, as the Shockers have elected to switch the ball screen coverage because East was killing them, that creates this mismatch. And so they have to come help. Vanover knows it. And now East converts from three. We've seen them annihilate. The opponent on his ball screen dribble for the assist, and that time they have to adjust, and he hits you that way.
18 points, three steals, four rebounds, and nine assists for Sean East. Hard to find a better all around game in college basketball today. And just two turnovers as well. I mean, he has kept control of this game. And it might be a different story for Missouri if they don't have the ball in 55's hands. Carter misses the front end. Two steps forward, one step back for this Missouri team, unable to put it away. Missouri switching the zone late here. Give up a corner of three. Ridgenall, 36% from deep. That was a good open look. Dennis Gates said, let's run some offense, use some clock. Sean East says, why don't I pick up a foul and go to the line? Here are featured ESPN Plus AAC events Monday for women's hoops. It's Houston Christian against Wichita State at 7 Eastern. December 13th, a men's matchup. FIU goes against 13th ranked Florida Atlantic at 7 Eastern. And December 16th, Clemson takes on Memphis at 3 Eastern. If you're an AAC fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash AAC. Good league this year. Memphis, a couple of good wins, but held off at the last moment against Chris Beard in Memphis yesterday. Uh, pardon me, Ole Miss yesterday. East has 19 now. Memphis had a big comeback against Missouri here early in the season. Down 14. Came back and won that one comfortably. Missouri's the couple of the free throw line. 19 of 21 today. And East another 20 point game. He only had two of those. His first 90 games as a college player. Now he's got five this season. Poto, such a good passer. You want to get him the ball in the middle of that zone. They did. He elected to take it against the defenders that were set rather than kick it out. Honor splits a 13 footer. Good. Bakers does it for Nick Honor. Missouri's opened up a double digit lead now. Under a minute to play. Beverly stepped through. And a follow by Ridgenall. Quick timeout, Wichita State. We've got an eight point game, 52 seconds left in regulation in Columbia. Shocker still hanging in. Missouri is 7 and 1 on the season when scoring 70 points or more. Lone loss came in the first loss of the season. Not going to Jackson State here at home. First win of the year for Tigers of Jackson State. Drill to inbound to Vanover. Here's East. What a luxury for Dennis Gates. End of game when you've got two veteran guards in East and Honor, both good free throw shooters as well. Of course, they're ball handling. That'll be the fifth on Ridgenall. It stops the clock with the foul after they try to trap. And Missouri hit the free throw line. Wichita State will have a minute to decide who's going to replace Ridgenall, and Paul Mills will steal it as a timeout. Well, when they talk about it, it doesn't matter who starts and who finishes. Connor Vanover and Caleb Grill did not start this game, but for the second consecutive game, they've been part of the closing five. And so you can see they have started to earn trust with Dennis Gates and this staff down the stretch. The Missouri team does not have an easy non-conference the rest of the way in December. That includes rivalry games in St. Louis against Illinois and in Kansas next season or next week, I should say. They also got Seton Hall in Kansas City. 21 for East. Seven second half assists. Yeah, he's been brilliant, and all of those have been off ball screen, just probing the defense or getting into that underneath the basket, Steve Nash style. He has been just sensational. I've loved watching him take that next step. He was a role player last year, but there's no question he is a star this year. Van over. It's whistled for his third. He kind of lit up, Sean Easton, when we asked him about the move up the scouting report, the opportunity to be more of a star. And he said, yeah, it's just it's a new team. It's a new opportunity. He and Nick Honor spent a lot of time talking about where they are as players and how to be featured now in this Dennis Gates offense. He's a guy now with four straight 20-point games. And most of those buckets are unassisted. 
I mean, he, he just goes right. and gets his own. It, the degree of difficulty on his shots would appear higher for most players, but not to Sean East. Well, it feels like even though they're unassisted, they come with the threat of an assist because right. the ball sticks in his hands so much. And that's part of his assist game. Great feed from Van over to Honor. They didn't get Poto for the reach, and so finally they get it up top to Abide. It's his third. Sean East made four stops in five years, six different schools, and seven going back to his high school days. He seems right at home as a Missouri Tiger. There's the dual threat. You see him kicking out there. I mean, how does he even see that amongst the trees and the trap? But he is looking for his teammates. Every time he puts the ball on the deck, he is a threat to score or a threat to pass. And Wichita State has been a victim of both of those dual threat opportunities by Sean East. Another one coming for Nick Honor. 1,000 points scored. Lake Highland Prep, where his dad is the award-winning girls basketball coach, six state championships, and a national coach of the year honor. For dad Al. Rogers off the mark with the three attempt. Grill with the rebound. And Wichita State won't foul. Missouri will go to 7-2 on the season. And the Shockers. Suffer their second loss. Up next for Mizzou is Kansas. I'll be at Allen Fieldhouse with Frank Forchella next Saturday afternoon. And the renewal of that fantastic rivalry. Ten point win for the Tigers. But Missouri was able to do exactly what they wanted to coming into this game dictate tempo, tempo and force turnovers. And that's what happened. 18 turnovers leading to 20 key points for the Missouri Tigers. That's Dennis Gates basketball. Not a shocker. Missouri with the win. They've now won six of seven head to head with the Shockers dating back to the early 1950s. Sean East leads the way for Missouri. 22 points and nine assists. And the Tigers protect their home court now. Another win for Missouri here at Mizzou Arena. That's all from Columbia for analyst Dane Bradshaw, producer Joe McCoy, our director Jordan Alvis, and our sensational SEC and ESPN crew. I'm Tom Hart. Our final score, Missouri 82, Wichita State 72.